In the Kazigao Corridor in eastern Kenya, the bush stretches as far as the eye can see. Monitoring the land is impossible without aircraft. Since the place has become a nature reserve, the wildlife has returned, and with it, poachers. Forest rangers patrol the area daily. Helicopters are used to move the men around. Their aim is to stop illegal hunting. More often than not, they arrive too late. The pilot has located another dead elephant and directs the men to it. It's the 30th elephant to be killed this year. The poachers use poison. It's more subtle than a gun. The poaching method which was used is a poisoned halo. They were using those poisoned halo. So it was eat from somewhere, it came and died here. It is not easy for us actually to find this thing the way it is. Hi, Eric. Yeah, fine, thank you, sir. Rob Dodson has been leading the project for 20 years and built things up from the start. How long do you think it's been dead? Illegal ivory poaching is a growing threat for the reserve. Demand for ivory has increased significantly in the last year, mainly fueled by increase in ivory prices in China. Price of ivory per kilo has risen from $10 a kilo to $100 a kilo. One of the biggest challenges we have is to make sure that revenue from the carbon project goes into the communities to incentivize the communities to protect the wildlife for future generations. At the beginning of 2011, Wildlife Works got permission to sell CO2 certificates to people who want to offset their carbon emissions. 20 years ago, the corridor was used as farmland and for grazing cattle. Now, the wildlife is back and the forest is recovering. Rob Dodson has expanded the conservation area in recent years. Each year, Wildlife Works plants some 50,000 trees on the edge of settlements and in places where the deforestation is worst. The protected area under the Casagal Corridor Red Project is about 200,000 hectares. There's about 100,000 people who live in and around that area. And at present market prices, which is about $6 per tonne, our 1.2 million tonnes brings in about $7.5 million to the project area per year. Wildlife Works has a permit to sell carbon offset certificates from the forest for 30 years. A third of the revenue goes to communities around the reserve. After two years of drought, the rains have finally returned. Farmers are again able to work their land. Resistance to the project has waned since the locals have come to understand that climate conservation benefits them directly. They really need money because water is in short supply. The reservoirs are hardly ever full. Many people were only able to survive the drought by relying on government aid. Well, the money that our community will get from uh, uh, carbon projects is 5 million shillings, and 80% goes to the water problem because people, our people are fetching water from rock catchments after the rains. After the rains they are gone off, then we have got no water. People have to run up and down to fetch for water elsewhere. Hey, the smell? Yeah. Yeah, it's a fire smell. So, in the direction. Yeah, it's blowing this side. So it must be somewhere down here. The search for fuel also drives the villagers into the conservation area. Charcoal is scarce. The farmers try repeatedly to fell trees in the reserve in order to make charcoal. Because they know it's illegal, they go deep into the bush to do it. When rangers discover charcoal pits, they destroy them immediately. As you can see, what I'm doing is I'm opening up this uh, charcoal kiln, which, uh, which we found it this morning. It has been put up by illegal charcoal burners. So when we open them up this way, it's the one way of discouraging them coming in. But outlawing the practice and destroying the kilns is not enough, because the charcoal burners will just go elsewhere. Money from the project is being used to set up sustainable charcoal manufacture. 
Only branches are burned, so the trees can keep growing. Wildlife Works has developed a simple machine for pressing briquettes. Several villages in the region have already adopted the practice. A small garment company has been set up to let people earn more money. This is where the Wildlife Works collection is made. But soon, the women here will be making clothing for a German sportswear label as well. Without the money from the Climate Conservation Project, a success like this would hardly have been possible. The communities in this area have historically been very reliant on subsistence farming, charcoal burning and bushmeat hunting. That's not sustainable as the population has increased so much. So we're using some of the carbon money to industrialize, to create jobs in light industry and in ecotourism to provide an alternative. Alternatives like this are important because the population continues to grow. The forest area at the foot of Mount Kazigao will only continue to thrive if the local people earn more money by maintaining it than by destroying it. <laughs> 